What are the primary colors? We begin by placing the primary colors in a triangle. Now what color do you get when you mix red and blue? Blue and yellow? Yellow and red? Purple, green, orange. These are the secondary colors. You will notice that with the secondary colors, there's not only one shade of orange, green and purple, but that they are different shades. Where do we place the greens? In between the blue and yellow. It is this combination that makes green. We will notice that there are different greens. Some that are lighter and have more yellow, and some that are darker and have more blue. Now let's place the greens in between blue and yellow. You will have noticed from this activity that there are certain colors that don't quite fit comfortably into the color wheel. Look at this light blue. This color you get by adding white. Look at this dark green. This you get by adding black. When we add white to a color, it's called a tint. When we add black, it's called a shade. There are many other ways of constructing a color wheel. For instance, we can use torn paper from magazines or small pieces of fabric. We can also use rubbish. Send the children outside in a green group, a yellow group, and an orange group, a red group, a purple group, and a blue group. They collect things only in their colors, or they can bring things from home and then construct a color wheel on the floor. Once working with crafters in a rural area where there were no magazines, paint, or rubbish, we constructed a color wheel purely from nature. Now we will use the three primary colors and paint a 12-part color wheel. We begin by drawing a circle and dividing it into 12 parts. When we paint, it is important to set up properly. We need newspaper, clean water and some trays for mixing. We begin by painting in the three primaries. Red, leave three spaces, blue, leave another three spaces and finally yellow. So now we have our basic structure. The three primaries are there, each with three blank spaces in between. Now we begin with the secondary colors. Where do the greens go? In between the blue and yellow. The trick here is to ensure that you mix three distinctively different greens. Then it's important to place them correctly. The yellow green goes next to the yellow, the mid green in the middle, and the blue green next to the blue. Then we move on to the purples. Again, we want to aim for three distinctively different purples. A red purple, a middle purple, and a blue purple. The same for the oranges. We want to mix a yellow orange, a middle orange, and a darker red orange that gets placed next to the red. Once you have painted a 12 pot color wheel, you can also explore what happens when you add white to the colors you have mixed. This makes the colors tints, or black, which makes shades. Painting a color wheel is a great way to become familiar with color mixing. It can be fun and exciting to watch the color wheel come to life as all the different colors are mixed and painted into their correct places. But essentially, painting a color wheel is about following a formula, and this is not really what creative art is about. So it is important that the color wheel leads somewhere. It can be the introductory activity for painting a still life or a landscape, something that allows for individual expression.